Hello, we welcome you to the online worship service for Ascension Lutheran Church in Littleton, Colorado, a suburb of Denver, for the Mother's Day weekend, May 7 and 8, and Happy Mother's Day to all you who have given birth, and God bless you for what you do and have done and continue to do. I'm Pastor Mike Zender, normally serving here at Ascension as the Minister of Music, and normally preaching and bringing this service to you is our pastor, John Larson. And I have bad news, well, bad news and good news, happy ending, but Pastor Larson was involved in a very serious accident in Gallup, New Mexico, just yesterday. He had been visiting his father, Ross, and his mom in Phoenix, Arizona, and he was on his way back, and he was hit uh, head on in a in a terrible car accident and a man had some kind of medical emergency of his own flipped the car and it hit on the driver's side where Pastor Larson was he was riding alone and he had um, multiple punctures in his intestines I guess from the seat belt as well as a fractured pelvis and fractured bone in his back bones and he has a broken nose and lacerations on his face so a lot of stuff that happened to him and we're so sorry to hear that and of course we're just going to pray for him right away right now we're not going to wait till prayer time although we're, we'll certainly include it but we're glad to God for sparing his life and Pastor Larson if you're wishing we're all praying for you and wishing for you God's best Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you, first of all, that you have spared Pastor Larson his life, that your angels guarded him. And even though that he has experienced this horrible accident, we um, are grateful that you have kept him for us and that he has more years of ministry ahead and that he's gone successfully through his surgery. And now we pray for his recovery and his health and uh, that you would keep him out of pain and give comfort to his wife Marilyn and his folks and his children. And uh, we look forward to seeing what you're gonna do, Lord, but we pray for your healing. In Jesus' precious name, amen. We're uh, hoping Pastor Larson will be released sometime early next week. And of course, uh, those of you that uh, are online or get our happenings, you'll get information as it becomes available. Well, today we are going to uh, hear a message about John uh, John chapter 20 where Thomas said unless I see the wounds of Jesus I will not believe so we're going to begin by hearing a prelude of praise for Jesus and all he has done called ye watchers and ye holy ones the German for this is lost uns erfreuen and uh, this tune exists in a number of hymns in our hymnal and in the Reformation Day, interestingly enough, it was called the Queen of Girls. So enjoy as we hear the prelude on Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones by David Shack. Thank you. 
Let's begin our worship now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we invite you to sing along on that very same hymn, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. As we always do coming into the presence of the Lord, we realize that we are sinful beings in front of a holy God. So we confess our sins to God the Father together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. I bring you good news. The Lord doesn't give us what we deserve, but he gives us what we need. Instead of the judgment that we deserve, he gives us his mercy and forgiveness that we do not deserve. So it is my privilege to announce to you the full and free forgiveness of Jesus Christ who died for your sins on the cross. If you believe in him and confess with your mouth that he is the son of God, and know that he has risen from the dead, your sins are fully forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our scripture for today, as I mentioned earlier, is from John 20, starting at verse 19. Jesus appears to his disciples. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jew, the Jewish leaders, 
Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. And indeed, that's just what happened in our confession and absolution. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, which means the twin, he was one of the twelve. He was not with the disciples when Jesus came, so the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. <clears throat> A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. And though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Now stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and by believing that you might have life in his name. Our sermon to title today is called The Bummer Lamb, and this sermon was written by Pastor Larson ahead of time in anticipation that he was going to actually be gone to Phoenix until today. So these are not my sermonic thoughts. These are Pastor Larson's, and I am just presenting them to you today. So here is his message. He writes about a woman named Pamela Hiscox, who was a young lady that died of, of an early age, and she wrote an article called The Bummer Lamb, and here's what she had to say. Every once in a while, a ewe will give birth to a lamb and reject it. There are many reasons why she may do this. If a lamb is returned to the ewe, the mother may kick or push the animal away. Once a ewe rejects one of her lambs, she will never change her mind. These little lambs will hang their heads so low, it looks like something is wrong with its neck but its spirit is broken. And these lambs are called bummer lambs. Unless the shepherd intervenes, the lamb will die all alone, rejected. And so do you know what the shepherd does? He takes that little rejected one into his home. He hand feeds it, keeps it warm by the fire. He'll wrap it with blankets and hold it to his chest so that the bummer lamb can hear his heartbeat, and once the lamb is strong enough, the shepherd will place it back into the field with the rest of the flock. And that sheep never forgets how the shepherd cared for him when his mother rejected him. And when the shepherd calls the flock, guess who runs to him first? That's right, the bummer lamb. He knows the shepherd's voice intimately. It's not that he's loved more, it just he knows intimately the one who loves him. And he has experienced the shepherd's love one on one. And then Pamela continues, So many of us are like bummer lambs, rejected and broken, but Jesus is our good shepherd. He cares for our every need, holds us close to his heart so that we can hear his heartbeat. And we may be broken and feel rejected, but we are deeply loved by God, who is our good shepherd. 
There are times when we are simply just shut out by others. They don't like something about us. We're bummer lambs to them. Rejected, shunned, isolated, made to stand all alone. And there are some horrible stories of what people have to endure at the hands of others, suffering for no good reason. Personally, I think about what's happening in Ukraine right now and the horrible stories of the way people are being treated there. Sometimes people become bummer lambs of their own choosing or by their own actions. Now this is the third Sunday of Easter and for many years the Bible reading assigned for today is John 20 about a doubting Thomas as we sometimes call him. He was a bummer lamb of his own choosing. The text that I read from John 20 gives us information about the resurrected Jesus coming to his followers on Easter evening. And it says, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together and the doors were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. John chapter 20. But guess who was missing that first time Jesus showed? You got it. The guy we called Doubting Thomas was not there. Now he hadn't been kicked out, but he wasn't there. And during the week following the resurrection, Thomas was told over and over that the disciples had seen Jesus and seen the scars from his crucifixion, but he refused to believe it. And even though Jesus was scarred, he was resurrected. He was alive. But Thomas, choosing to be a bummer lamb, rejected the words. And he said, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger in his side and where the nails were, I will not believe it. So... The shepherd comes looking for the bummer lamb whose head was bowed low, who had no hope, no faith, no future or promise. And a week later, a week after that happened, Thomas was with the disciples this time. And even though the doors were locked, it said that Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And then he turned to Thomas and said, okay, put your finger here. Put your fingers in my hands. See my scars. Reach out. Put your hand in my side. And now stop doubting and believe. See, that's what Jesus does for all of us. To all his bummer lambs. He comes and seeks us when we're lost and he finds us and gives us the reassurance we need. Some folks have been beat up by life. It hasn't treated them well. Some folks have chosen themselves to run from the shepherd, to live in unbelief or rebellion and sin. But the account of the resurrection of Jesus tells us that the resurrected Christ looks for bummer lambs. He seeks us. He looks for us. He wants us to know his peace. You know who else was in the room with Thomas, both Easter evening and the Sunday afterwards? Another bummer lamb named Peter. Well, earlier and later we know Peter as the rock, but he's the one who boasted of his courage before Jesus' death. Even though Jesus said that they were all going to run away and leave him deserted and on his own, Peter said, no, no, Lord, never will this happen. I will never disown you, even if I have to die. 
but he didn't have a very good record. He didn't die with Jesus. And three times he declared he had no idea who Jesus even was. I tell you, I do not even know that man. And now on Easter evening, he's in the room with the other followers with the doors locked because they feared the Jewish leaders and that the execution that Jesus endured would be something that they would also have to endure. Thomas, bummer lamb, Peter, bummer lamb, Jesus, the good shepherd, comes looking for both of them. And he comes looking for bummer lambs like you and me. And this is what scripture says of those of us that have been broken or bummed in life. Isaiah 42, a bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. Jesus gives an invitation to all of us who have been battered and beaten and feel like we can't face another round. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew 11. Jesus came back on that Sunday after Easter for one person, Thomas, the bummer lamb. He had lost his faith. He had lost hope. Jesus took it and embraced him, held him close to his heart, and the lost lamb would look at Jesus and realize there was hope. And he confessed his faith. My Lord, and my God. Peter is also visited by Jesus on Easter Day itself. And later he would be recommissioned to be a vessel of God's grace to other people, even though he had denied his Lord. And Jesus does it this way, Peter, do you love me? Jesus asked Peter this three times. And three times Jesus says things like, Feed my sheep, take care of my flock, tend my lambs. And Peter, who had wept bitterly after he had denied his Lord, whose head was low, now was lifted. Jesus, before Peter's fall, would say to him, I prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail, and when you have turned back that you would strengthen your brothers and of course that is exactly what happens sometimes all of us are bummer lambs everyone pastor was told that while enduring this pandemic an Italian wife had had just a little too much of her husband during the endless quarantine and she hung a big sign over her balcony that said, husband for sale. And he doesn't remember for sure, but maybe she had it cheap. <laughs> Bummer lambs, heads low, discouraged, being rejected, overwhelmed. You know, I, I might add that we've all been bummed out by what's happened to Pastor Larson. We're worried for him and his future, worried about ourselves and our future. Sometimes we just feel overwhelmed by circumstances. But you know what saved the lives of those bummer lambs two millennia ago, Thomas and Peter? The resurrection saved them. And that's exactly what saves you as well. The resurrection of Jesus saves you. Scripture says, if that's not true, if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is futile and you're still in your sins. But those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. 
If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. But then the good news. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. 1 Corinthians 15. Well, Peter, the bummer lamb who was sought and found, had this to say about the hope that Jesus brings to all through his resurrection. 1 Peter 1, he wrote, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So Pastor Larson asked the question, did Jesus rise from death or not? Is this true or not? If it isn't true, then we have no hope, no foundation, no life. We'd all be bummer lambs with our heads bent and our hearts broken. But if it is true that Jesus has shown himself alive and defeated every evil force, then he will and does lift the spirits of dejected followers or bummed out followers with his words, peace be with you. Imagine Jesus standing in the room right now where you're watching and announcing those words to you, no matter what your circumstance. Peace be with you. What wonderful words. Us bummer lambs can have heads that are lifted and spirits made certain and strong. Jesus lives. He rose. We rise. We live. We are forgiven and given faith. And we can say with confidence and hope that we die with certain victory. Pastor Larson concludes, we are all bummer lambs given life in Jesus who was crucified and now lives forever. And to that we can all say, Amen. So, it's time now to join our hearts together in prayer. First, uh, an acknowledgement, the flowers at our altar today are given in lovely, loving memory of Emily Wren by Rose Kaler and Wayne Wren. So we remember her. And we first pray about this bummer lamb business. Dear Lord, when we feel defeated by circumstances in our life, or things that happen to us or to those that we love, we pray that you would come and speak to our hearts with your words, peace be with you, quiet, be still, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Thank you, dear Jesus, that you are the good shepherd that comes to seek and to save what is lost, to seek and to save what is bummed out or fearful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We've already prayed for Pastor John, but we just want to lift him up once again, Lord, for full and rapid recovery from his injuries and for safe travel as when he is able to return home and for his family. We pray for our brothers and sisters here at Ascension who are sick with COVID, for Janet Perot, Parrott, who is recovering at home after a stay in the hospital, with COVID, 
pneumonia and fluid on her lungs. For Marie Wynn, Edna Oxinger's sister, who had a mini stroke at TIA. For Ellie Lambert, who will have back surgery on May 9th. For three-year-old Rowan, dear Lord, student in our preschool who became sick with pneumonia while on a visit to Tennessee. For Lynn Nelson, for Luann Eisenhagen, who had back surgery on April 25th. For Marilyn Wood, Wirt, who fell and injured her ribs and is recovering after a few days at the hospital. For Cindy Fowler with heart rhythm issues. For Richard Kozitsky, hospitalized with a seizure. For Amy Bowden, Boding and her family at the death of her brother Brad on April 21st. For Ruth, age 15, and thank you, Lord, for the progress she's made this week. For Babe Van Lanningham, mother of Mike Zender, that's me, who's experiencing increased dementia and memory loss. For Ellen Thompson's brother-in-law, John Freund, and his wife, her sister Karen, as John has entered hospice care in Flower Mound, Texas. For Kurt Engel, who had back surgery on April 19th. For Russ Larson, that's Pastor Larson's father that he was visiting. For Mike Reimnitz, Harry, Henry Peepgrass, who has a fractured vertebrae. The family of Sandy Landgren, Land Greer's friend, Phil, who passed away last week. For Glory and Lino, for Gloria Goldriot's sister, Wendy Harrison, with kidney surgery this past Monday. For Carrie O'Byrne, Barb Bader, Joan, Joan Antonin's sister, Judy in hospice care. For Lorreen Grau, for Nadine Ginkle, for Carol Zeller, for world leaders that they would seek and pursue peace in Ukraine, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for our country and our government to do all that it can to stop the suffering at our southern border. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for the people of Afghanistan who are experiencing hunger and displacement and for God's mighty hand to bring an end to this virus. We pray all these things in Jesus' name who has also taught us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face upon you and give you peace. Amen. One thing by way of announcement, we pray that this service has been a blessing to you. We thank you for joining in our concern for our dear Pastor Larson and his wife Marilyn. Um, we'll keep you posted as to when he might possibly come home. And if there are any special needs that we can be helpful of as a congregation. You may know, for those of you that uh, attend live worship on Saturdays or Sundays, that our schedule was going to change on June 5th. And instead of having two services on Sunday morning, we were just gonna have one at nine o'clock. The elders are now discussing about moving that up a little earlier because of what's happened to Pastor Larson to as early as next week, May 15th. So we may be starting a new schedule if you're attending Worship Live, please check our website at uh, alutheran.com or listen to the 
um, uh, message on the church voicemail or read it in our newsletter. Now we pray that you'll have a very blessed week, very happy Mother's Day, and thank you for joining us.